You are seriously missing out if you aren't using this top tier spice when cooking. Sumac's tart and tangy flavour is a game changer, so much so that it's my third most used spice after pepper and chilli flakes. It is versatile, cheap and incredibly easy to use, plus it unlocks a whole new dimension to your favourite foods. Before getting into specific dishes, let me explain what sumac is and how it should be used. This is a staghorn sumac tree that fruits in late summer with these upright red horns. These horns are clusters of sumac berries, which are dried and ground into sumac the spice. They're pretty distinctive trees that are found in many countries and can be foraged for sumac. If you're lazy like me, you could also forage for great sumac online. Avoid sumac that is ground into an ultra-fine powder and choose a darker colour product that is on the flakier side. Good sumac looks wet and moist even when it's completely dry. Check the ingredients too because some companies use additives to make sumac tangier. You should only buy 100% sumac or sumac that is mixed with salt. Once you've got some sumac, taste it to get comfortable with the flavour. The best way to do this is to make a glass of sumac tea. After steeping the tea, give it a taste and those tart and tangy flavours you'll notice are what makes sumac so special. It's like sour jelly sweets or tamarind candies, which FYI are incredible. The sourness comes from malic acid, which is a natural acid that sumac berries are rich in. If you're a fan of other high malic acid fruits like green apples, sour cherries and grapes, I think you'll love sumac. The benefit of ingredients like sumac is that the tangy flavour of malic acid doesn't overpower other flavours in the same way that citrus and vinegars can. Citrus fruits like lemons are high in citric acid, which is a bright and sour tasting acid that can cut through almost any other flavour. Vinegars like apple cider vinegar are high in acetic acid, which has a long-lasting sharp acidic taste rather than sour flavour. Malic acid, on the other hand, is quite mild. It's sour enough to make your face pucker up, but it's still really pleasant and the flavour doesn't linger for long. One trick that I've found to make sumac taste stronger is to rehydrate sumac with a little water before using it. That pleasant tanginess is the reason I use sumac on a daily basis. It also has the benefit of being a dry ingredient so it can be used in dry spice mixes. Unlike fresh lemons, I don't have to worry about sumac going off, which means I can use it at a moment's notice. I keep it at easy reach in my spice rack and I always have a supply on hand. Beyond using sumac as a garnish for hummus, I mostly use it to balance other flavours, which is an important part of making any recipe shine. Sumac makes it really easy to add a small amount of sourness to anything you're making. For breakfast, I sometimes sprinkle a little sumac over Greek yoghurt. The tanginess of the sumac makes the yoghurt come alive, even though it's already sour. During lunch, I generally use sumac to cut through fatty flavours, by sprinkling it on eggs or using it on avocado toast. At dinner, it goes into marinades, spice mixes and also salad dressings. Beyond that, it works incredibly in desserts, particularly those with a tart or fruity flavour. It is a veritable food hack to use sour ingredients to enhance dishes. I'm no scientist, but sour foods have been shown to increase saliva production, and other studies show that increased saliva enhances taste perception. You can try this yourself by tasting the same food before and after taking a sip of lemon juice. Here's some exercises you can do that will give you a better understanding of sumac. Make a sumac simple syrup by adding sugar, water and sumac together in a pot and simmering for 10 minutes. Add the syrup to a glass full of ice and pour over some sparkling water for a refreshing sumac drink. This here is a sumac fruit compote that you can make with any fruit. I slice some peaches into small cubes then place them in a pot with a splash of water to cook over medium heat. I also added in some sugar and plenty of sumac. After simmering for about 10 minutes, I was left with a wonderful compote that is incredible to say the least. Once cooled, serve it over yogurt or plain ice cream, and for a decadent option, cheesecake. If you have good self-control, try this suggestion from Instagram for a sumac nut mix. Mix together a good amount of lemon, honey and sumac in a bowl, then add in some of your favourite nuts. Mix together, then bake in the oven until the nuts are golden and sticky. This is an evil, evil snack that makes for a great topping if you eat a lot of plain yogurt like us. If you eat a lot of eggs, sprinkle sumac over your fried, boiled or scrambled eggs to jazz them up. Even plain old cheese tastes better with sumac, kind of like how grapes enhance cheese. If you're making roast potatoes, you can take them to the next level by tossing them with a garlic and sumac dressing. For salads, I make a lot of fatouche dressing which features sumac heavily, but you can also use it in any vinaigrette. A quick salad you should know is sumac onion salad. Take red onion slices and massage them with salt and sumac. Let them sit and chop some parsley, then after 10 minutes mix the onions and parsley together. We've done loads of Middle Eastern recipes using sumac in the past, including masakhan, the most sumac-y dish in existence. Rather than show you them again, we've curated a playlist of recipes that heavily feature sumac, so you can start cooking with it. Sumac is a versatile spice, so I want you to tell me the incredible uses you discover for it. Alongside ingredients like tahini, it is misunderstood and underutilised in our kitchens, which is why you should watch this video next to learn more.